You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. It's a Monday around about lunchtime, actually. I'm sat by the River Verbath. Today it's quite breezy, uh, even more so because of the river. And the weather is overcast, but let's say for an Englishman, exceedingly pleasant. For those that have been following the channel, that's the blog, the podcast, um, and the rest of it that you can find online, you'll know that I've been very keen about traditions, uh, the phrase that if you lose your tradition, you lose yourself, you lose your culture, you lose your community. And on my bucket list, I'd had take a ride on a Dayak, which is a traditional boat um, of Banja Luka, although I think I've got that wrong. The Dayak is something else, but I'm sure we're going to find out about that. Um, so I took some time and so very, very luckily, I've managed to be joined today here at the Dayak Club in Banja Luka, right next to the River Verbas by Naboysha, and we're going to find out a tremendous amount about Dayaks, its history, how it fits into Banja Luka traditions, um, a little bit about the past, a lot about the present, and some ideas um, about the future. So, Naboysha, um, you've not had any questions up front. You haven't got a clue what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I'm sure that we're going to get everything um, from the heart. So first of all, a little bit about you. Yeah, so my name is Nebojša. I've been on the river and, and driving in boats and driving them for all my life. Since I was an infant, I'm, I'm, I'm here. My grandma uh, grew up here. She rode the boat when she was young. And the river and the boats are just in my blood. So that's how I ended up here with you today. So you're, you're a true river boy from Banja Luka. Yeah, exactly. We're sat here today um, in the shadow of five absolutely gorgeous boats. Is there, I mean, as a foreigner, uh, and when I've talked about Dayaks, everybody in Banja Luka said, well, it's the boat, but it's not actually the boat, is it? Yeah, that's, that's something that a lot of people get wrong. Dayak is actually that wooden stick uh, with the metal end that you see that people drive the boat with. That's actually called the Dayak. Uh, the metal tip at the end, that's called Stitza. From, that's uh, from a German word. And Dayak itself is a Turkish word uh, from what we have been told by one of our professors uh, that's from Banja Luka. Uh, the tradition itself is as old as the city. We have really, really old photos. One of the first 8 millimeter films that was made in Banja Luka. We, we have dark boats on them and the stores, stories go way, way back, older than that. The main story that I've heard is it was a, initially a way of transporting uh, commercial goods up and down the river because Banja Luka didn't have any bridges at the time. Is, is, am I right there or, or are your stories slightly different? No, that's completely right. Uh, in, in the past, there were only one or two bridges in, in the city and around the city. And this was the only way to get from one bank to the other and also to move goods upstream and downstream. Uh, there is a, an old story. Uh, my family here had a boat. And when, there wa- when the bridge you, you can see downstream was constructed, I know a story that my grandma and her other sister and the other two brothers were ferrying workers from one bank to the other and earning money that way and she remembers that she always got a bit more because she was she was a female uh, and she I remember she's telling me now uh, we were so young we had only like 12 or 13 we were like 12 or 13 years old I if I was in place of those workers, I would not got in that boat with, with a young child to fer- ferry me across. It's funny that you're, you're saying about there's your grandma uh, and other, uh, other ladies uh, ferrying people around uh, on these boats because only recently it, there was a big thing made about, oh, we have girls driving dayaks. And it seemed to me, wow, that's new. But actually, it's not, is it? 
No, actually it's not. My grandma and her sister grew up on the bank. They spent their whole summers while they were not in school here after they were, they were finished helping uh, around the house. They, they spent their whole summers here on the river driving the boats. Uh, it is uh, girls, dri women driving boats and girls. That little fell down, but that's only because not a lot of people draw the boats in the first place so that was an uncommon thing to see a girl or a female driving a boat but uh, in the past couple of years uh, we managed we do have a lot of females that started coming here started learning how to drive the boat and driving them quite quite nicely these boats and i'm looking at one now that is just you know bobbing in 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 the wash of the river um, and it is a flat bottom boat it, it reminds me of two things one is the famous gondolas of venice with the uh, at the bow and the other thing with the with the, the sort of like wideness and the flatness reminds me of the what we call punts uh in england and they're quite famous for uh drunken student parties uh from oxford and cambridge where the aim is to try and get on the river in one place and then to try and get your boat along uh, without falling over because you're so outrageously drunk but that's most probably because of the stupid british culture but the, the shape of this boat suits the river, doesn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you're right about the punting boats. The way the dike boat is driven around is exactly the same way the punting boats are driven. Uh, from our research, the boats are a bit more narrow. They're a bit more slender. And you are exactly right that they are made to suit the river. Uh, the problem is that Verbas is really, really shallow on some places, only... 20 centimeters deep and uh, if you were rowing uh, the boat isn't the problem the problem is that you need a depth as much as your your pedal is uh, so at those uh, very, very very shallow places where the water isn't too deep this is perfect and the most efficient way to get upstream and to get upstream because you don't need a lot of depth depth for it now when when, when you're driving this boat with this uh, four meter pole um, one would might might say well it's quite easy but this river has a notoriously fast current doesn't it yes this river is a mountain river uh, we had countless kayak competitions here we had the world cup just past week in wild water kayak uh, upstream in our canyon and the river is the fast mountain river uh, with a lot of rapids and one part of uh, enjoyment is uh, beating the rapid to manage to get up the rapid upstream and to to successfully beat it that's one of the charms nowadays that uh, driving the driving boat like this uh, provides you I saw uh, a YouTube video uh, I don't know how many years ago it was uh, I think it was a Red Bull event and I was just absolutely stunned when I was sat watching this that these boats could move so fast just being pushed with a pole and i thought these i mean it's got to be an olympic sport surely because it, you're like gladiators to to make that work yeah for when you watch these boats in a competition or something like that or some of the promotional material we put out uh, we try to oversell it with extreme a little bit uh, because that's the the way we like it in a ma in a manner but the truth is that the technique is much more important than than the strength uh, in our experience the best uh, time to start learning the to drive the boat is around 12 to 14 years old uh, because at that time you don't have enough strength and you really need to get your technique perfect in order for you to be able to drive it and then the strength the strength comes along afterwards and then you have really proficient technique and uh, with just a bit of strength you can you can do wonders so if you start say around the age of 12 and 13 that's pretty young really um, so let's immediately flip to the other end um, here on the river uh, without giving names because some people get shamed by age I, I'm one of those um, have you any idea of the oldest person that drives a Dayak at the moment? Uh, at the moment, actually, no. But I know my grandma, some couple of years back, when she was 
1965 or something she she used to go in in a boat and just go for for a small uh, small ride she didn't have strength or stamina to do to drive for for a long time but she used to enjoy just step in the boat and go f go for for a small ride maybe jump out of the boat to cool herself and uh, yeah so that's that's what i know from from my experience how far do you take your boats now from where we're sat at the Dyak Club? Is it just a case of, oh, let me get this right, downstream or is it upstream as well? No, so since this is a fast moving mountain river, we usually tell people and what we usually do is usually go upstream because if something happens to us, if Povreda, uh, injured, yeah, yeah if, if, injured, we get, yeah, if yeah. you get injured or something like that, uh, then it's easier to come downstream than to to pull yourself upstream. So we usually encourage people wherever you go into boat, just go upstream. It's it, it if anything happens, it will be easier for you to to get back back home. Uh, but we at at the club uh, we have an event called ultra marathon uh, where we would go upstream and uh, we go upstream for almost six or seven kilometers uh, all the way up to the canyon where the competitions were held the past week uh, and that's like an all-day event we start early in the morning around 7 a.m and we get up there for at so sometimes around 2 3 p.m and then we go back downstream uh, that is very very exhausting and you do need to have a lot of strength for it and uh, going upstream um, that far back you really go through a lot of rapids uh, you try to conquer them some of them you conquer some of them conquer conquer you and uh, basically that's an all-day event that's one of the events that we organized in the past year due to COVID we didn't we didn't do a lot of things that we usually do, but uh, yeah, that's that's the farthest that we've gone from from here. My bucket list um, said, as, as I mentioned, about having a ride on a dike, and I was very, very fortunate to get it um, only last week. Uh, we started off from here, and immediately my wife was saying, oh, "Be careful, it's going to fall over." And Dragon was the, the the driver, and 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 he said, "Listen, it won't flip." It, it, it won't flip um, and I when I looked at it I thought well maybe because of the, the way the boat is built with its flat bottom and as you said it's got such a shallow draft um, it might not flip um, but is there any chance of it taking water so it sinks yeah I mean you saw it when you were taking a ride uh, when you drive there's constantly water coming in so it's usually good to have someone to, to take the water out when you're driving uh, but yeah, it, it can happen that due to the driver not taking good care uh, that the, the boat gets filled with the water and it, at that point the buoyancy is neutral so it just stays like uh, one or two centimeters above the water. Then, it's, then the boat is very large, the volume inside is very large, so there's a lot of water, a lot of inertia, and it's, it's a challenge to stop it going down the river and to take the water out. It sounds quite, it sounds quite macho in a way, very adventurous. But you know that all the, all the photographs that you see, and when I walk across the bridges or I'm walking down the, the beautiful riverbanks here um, in late spring and through the summer and the early autumn, it seems to be one of the romanticest things that people do. It's always got young boys, young girls, or I'm not being ageist here, or older people. It seems to be something that is very romantic. Yeah, actually, when the stories go, when it was more popular uh, in the old days, that uh, girl, that's one of the traditions, that the girl is always the one who sits in the top and the boys are the ones who's pushing up the stream. So uh, in a sense, the people who have that river tradition know that, that that was a perk of having a boyfriend that drives the boat, that constantly and he will drive you up and down the stream and you would just sit down, uh, sunbathing. Uh, 
in the in the top of the boat that that's also one of the one of the traditions and there was also a competition uh, every uh, top of the boat is different so yeah every every one of these is different there are some that are similar looking yes but uh, there are slight differences so there were two things that make th those boats unique one is the top and uh, the second one is the girl so there was always a competition who will, who will get yeah, you have the nicest, who has the nicest top of the boat and who has the nicest girl behind the top. These days, as you're saying, you know, or rather, years ago, a boy would drive the, di drive the boat and the girl would be in it. But all I see these days are club members doing it. So has it now become the case where if you want to ride on a boat, then you come to the club here and somebody that is trained, somebody that is knowledgeable does it? Or is there still the chance that somebody could come off the street with their girlfriend and say, hey, I want to have a go? Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why we founded the club, to popularize this and uh, to bring this to the people who don't have a chance. Before we founded the club, you have basically, in order for you to learn to do it and to be able to do it, you would have to get good with someone who has the boat who has the time to teach you how to drive and who will give you the boat for at least the first year <laughs> who will trust you with his boat uh, to, to give you the boat to drive up and down the stream now we have the club uh, that we founded one of the main one of our objectives is to popularize this and uh, you can come here you there are people who will teach you how to drive the boat and then you can bring here your girlfriend your family when they visit and you can give them a ride how long does it take to to train somebody competently enough that they could be safe enough on the river from uh, it really differs from person to person uh, we had people who were coming here for two or three months who we wouldn't let drive them themselves alone but there are also people here who come and who in, who just in two months are really good with it and we we trust them to to go at it alone how many members have you got now I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I, I, I take it that means a lot yeah a lot a lot yeah let's say maybe a hundred members on paper but there are a lot of members who live abroad who come here only for a week or two who rent rent the boat and then they go they, they go back abroad where they live as i said we're sat here with a with a stack i don't know if that's the right maritime phrase to use but there's um five gorgeous boats here um they are made by hand aren't they yeah all of the boats uh you see here are made by zamala family uh, they are made by by hand and not a lot of them are made made in a year usually it's a single digit number and that are made made in a year now that begs the question if one is being made a year for example by one family does that mean that the tradition uh, the skill and all, all the speciality that goes with making these rather gorgeous looking boats I mean, if something happens, God forbid, to the family or to anything like that, once these boats would get old and couldn't go on the river anymore, that would be the end of it, right? I hope not. <laughs> no, but, but, but yeah, I, what I'm saying... With you. Uh, well, yeah, in the, this, all of these boats were made by Zamala family, but there is also uh, one person, one other person, who makes the boats. His father also made boats, so it's his family tradition. Uh, he doesn't produce a lot of boats. He lives abroad. He comes here only for a couple of weeks. He has his own boat. He did make a couple of boats, but but not a lot. Uh, there are also two guys who who we know from the river, uh, who are, who are visiting here, who made a couple of boats themselves for for their own use. And to be honest with you, uh, we welcome that. We didn't found the club so we we can have a monopoly on something. Uh, we did that t so to make it uh, 
open to whoever wants to do it and we do really do welcome that and uh, we really do like that they've, they've started doing that uh, starting maybe experimenting with some things uh, that we haven't and uh, we are looking forward to see those boats in action and maybe to see how their experiments go and maybe to apply some of those ourselves. So at the moment these boats are all of a certain traditional shape um, and, and uh, manufacture so with other families coming in I mean no two families would do the same thing Look, you know like, like even when they plant crops one family will do it one way one family will do it another so if we put that towards the boats this could be a real lifeline then if there's going to be different families doing things and it will also make it a little bit more interesting for people that use dikes yes actually yeah. uh, in the past uh, the dike boat itself wasn't as standard as it was today uh, that's maybe due to like the di diversity that happened over the past decade or so for, from the families who made it but in the past I know the stories that they were different sizes some were a meter or two longer some were a meter or two shorter uh, some in the past they were also a lot wider and because they were used for moving goods so it it was important that you can put more goods in the boat not not to ferry too many times uh, and uh, in the past they use catrin uh, the black gooey substance that pavement is made out of. Uh, bitumen. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah to uh, down to protect the boats. Uh, our family started using laca, la different lacas, and uh, that reduced the weight of the boat significantly uh, compared to the other boats. Uh, also, the standard length of the boat is now around seven meters. That's mostly dictated uh, by the length of the good plank that we can find uh, in the vicinity to make those boats out of. Uh, and yeah, the difference uh, in those boats isn't uh, that the other two guys that I mentioned started making isn't that great. Uh, when you would look on look them on the on the water, if you don't know those subtle differences, I don't think that anyone could uh, could tell them apart if they if they don't know what they are looking for. They're made from pine, right? And Bosnia Herzegovina is a country that's just full of forests everywhere, so there's definitely no shortage of material. Well, actually, in the past couple of years, yeah, the boats are made of pine. There is a lot of forests here, but it these boats are made from the first class pine. Uh, it has been a bit harder in the past decade to find uh, such good materials, uh, but we, we do have a source of it. Uh, people that work with wood all, all, almost know what we need, so months or two uh, before they, know, they, they put aside uh, the good stuff so we can we can buy it and dry it and then make boats out, out of it. We are in the mercy a lot uh, of the water level here. There are three dams upstream that regulate the water level here and that's that causes uh, a lot of issues f for us from time to time. Uh, we founded the club, the club with two main objectives. The uh, first objective is to uh, present a united front to and the second objective is to present uh, to give people the infrastructure so to say uh, to learn Dayak uh, and to keep tradition alive to popularize it uh, in 2009 uh, the summer was horrible there was rainfall almost whole summer there are traditional boat races that are going on for more than 60 years uh, that uh, once a year the boats will align, they will start, the race goes upstream, they will turn around, go downstream from where they started, then turn around and then come to the finish line. Uh, that year was so horrible, the water was, all, the water level was high throughout the whole summer and the people who uh, were organizing the race uh, wanted to do the race and maybe two boats on the whole river were down all of all of our pri private boats 
they were not club hosts at that time, uh, were still in storage because the weather was so awful. So that's when we, that's when we saw that we need something like our club where we would have all the people join, even those who have boats and those who haven't boats, that we could organize and present a united front when when organizing things like that. The second thing is uh, to popularize it. In order, f you can buy the boat, that, that's not a big issue, <laughs> but you need to store it somewhere during the winter. Uh, you need to maintain it. Every year it needs to be sanded down, new laka needs to be applied. If you hit the boat on, on a rock or something, uh, if the plank down is not good, you need to cut it out, put in a new one. So that's one of my friends in one of the interviews, fam famous interviews that we joke a lot is uh, the boat is not the box of matches. So there is a lot of things that's almost a year around. You need to keep it, maintain it. And a lot of people don't, don't have that, cannot do that. Uh, and that's the second thing we, we wanted is to popularize it, to open it to the masses so somebody who lives in an apartment building can come, can come here, can try it out. Hopefully he'll be good at it, he'll love it. And uh, he'll be able to bring that tradition to his brothers and sisters, to his nephews, uh, to his children tomorrow, so they can, they can pass it along. Another thing that we wanted is uh, one day when we get our offices, when we get our, yeah, let's say offices, uh, is uh, we want to have a workshop and a storage area so people who have their boats, uh, who don't have a means to storage them over the winter could bring their boats to us and we can storage those boats uh, inside that, that, that storage space. Last night I was in the cast castle uh, at a folklore event and one of the major underlying themes uh, was that uh, the country doesn't really understand at the moment that its culture is gradually dropping off. Uh, young people don't want to go and do folklore dancing or whatever and here we have another uh, traditional skill not only in the boat building but in the driving um, and keeping something that has been so banyaluka for um, s centuries. Um, there's a hundred members in the club now. Um, what is your honest feel um, for the future? Are Dayaks going to be here uh, when your great-grandson is here or or do you have a slight worry about it? I all, always do have a slight worry because these were always the, a bit turbulent <laughs> geographic region. So I do have, but I do really think with, it, with the club, we are going in the right direction and that this will be here for my grandchildren to enjoy as well. Finally, for people that are listening to this, wherever they are in the world, um, it's one thing to say, come to Banja Luka, and they go, where's Banja Luka? Um, uh, but when they find out and they do some research, they go, I've got to go, uh, do it. Um, if you had to say to someone, take a Dayak ride over anything else, what would, what would be the one thing that you would tell them that, that, that would in inspire them to want to do this, to excite them to want to do this? Yeah, this is something unique to the city. And basically, uh, People from the city uh, are a bit at fault because it's, it's dropping off. But we hope that in the future, when somebody says Banja Luka, the first thing that it would come, come to somebody's mind is it is that boat. Uh, we know like when you mention from somebody from the country, when you mention Mostar, the first thing that comes to mind is the bridge in Mostar. We want to associate Dayak in the same manner with our city. Music